Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, you guys. um, The title of this morning's message is The Power of a Reminder. The Power of a Reminder. And wake up, sleeper, let me remind you of something. Of course, we're taking it from uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the 14th verse. It says, let me remind you, uh, rise up from the dead, wake up, sleeper, and Christ will shine on you. This past week, um, I went to the store. There was a mutual friend that came to the house with Natalie and I. um, I was outside shooting a pellet gun. I got this rifle, big old rifle. It looks like a rifle with a scope on it, but it's just a little pellet gun, just playing around with it and stuff. And... um, uh, the friend decided, I mean, I was going to go to the store. She goes, hey, can you buy me a, a, a bottle of wine? It's like, yeah, sure. And then before I was leaving, <clears throat> Natalie said, he goes, babe, make sure, don't forget, buy me a Sprite. It's like, okay, no problem. I'll get you a Sprite. So I'm going to go to the store and buy me a, a bottle of wine and a Sprite. And so I take off in my big old truck. I had the gun with me. So instead of putting it away, I put it right there on the passenger side. I don't have a rack or anything, but it's just right there, just sitting there next to me. So I'm driving off. And I'm taking off. It's like, okay, I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go in there and just grab this right here, grab this, and then come back. And I got to the store, and there's nobody there. I noticed there's a lady outside uh, by herself smoking a cigarette. And so I park right in front. And before I get out of the car, I'm thinking, man, this does not look good. If there's a camera here, there, here's, a, here's a five foot eight Hispanic guy with black hair and mustache and a tattoo on his left side. You know, that's usually the, what they're looking for in the news. <laughs> And I have a gun and a rifle sitting right here on a, it looks like a rifle, but it's a pellet gun sitting here. I said, but that's not good. And this lady's over here by herself. So I get out of the car and I go in there and this lady starts walking out and I realize she's the employee. She's the only employee there. And so I'm going in there and I go off and I grab the wine real quick. And then immediately I hear the voice, where's your mask? With an attitude. And like, I don't want to make any noise because if I say something, she might press a button, police will come. I got a rifle here and I'm thinking, I'm like frozen. It's like, I wanted to say, we're, you know, take your mask off and we'll be even. But I didn't, I didn't want to say that. So I'm like, ma'am, I don't have a mask. I didn't bring a mask. And so uh, he goes, well, you need to go get your mask. I'm like, man, okay. So I'm in the crossroads. So I took off. I, was just, I just put the wine on the, on the, t- on the, on the counter there where she's at. And I'm going to take off. She goes, all right, all right. He goes, go ahead and I'll just check you out and you can just go on. It's like, ma'am, I don't need you to check me out. I already have a wife. And uh, I'm just, I wanted to say that. I didn't say that either. And so I, I went ahead and paid for the wine and I take off. And I'm taking off back and, you know, I, I'm going back home. And I'm thinking, man, I got away. I, I, I made it. But I, guess what I forgot? Man, all the ladies. <laughs> Jeez, exactly. So I go home, and I, the first question Natalie asked me, she goes, hey, babe, did you get my Sprite? And I'm like, oh, and I tried to explain the story to her, but that doesn't work, okay? <laughs> and so I had to leave, and I had to go and get some Sprite. I didn't have to, but I, I needed to. I, I, in Jesus' name, I had to. And I went and grabbed the Sprite and came back over. And so I wrote something down that's a really, really good life lesson for all you men. So here's a reminder for all men. Buying wine before Sprite, it's in my journal, it's never right. But buying Sprite before wine, everything will be just fine, okay? (laughs) Just a lesson for you guys. But here's the deal. We all have a tendency to forget the things that we need to remember and remember the things that we need to forget, don't we? Have you ever walked into a room all of a sudden and you know that you're on a mission, you know you're supposed to be there for a reason, and then you walk into the room and you're like, I forgot what I was here for. Anybody ever go through that? Business partners, those of you who have employees, have you ever had to remind your employees, hey, I'm the boss, you're the employee, you can't just do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. Anybody have to do that? Or parents, have you ever reminded your children, hey, I'm the parent here, right? We have a tendency to forget the things that we need to remember. And many of us live our lives as though Jesus is still on the cross, nailed to the cross. But remember that he is resurrected from the dead, He is sitting at the right hand of authority, and he's interceding for you and I, even right now as we speak, right? The only thing that's nailed to the cross is your sin and my sin. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, there's power in a reminder. But people leak. People forget. Oh, you don't have to repeat that. 
um, people need to be reminded of certain truth. You know, God had to remind Israel that, hey, whenever you get into the promised land, don't forget, remember who it is that delivered you from that place. We have a tendency to forget those things, correct? But not with God. God has a great memory. God never forgets his promises. God never forgets his people. So in our final talk this morning in this Wake Up Sleeper series, today's scripture, I had a little struggle with it because I couldn't find a practical application. But today's scripture has to do with something that we need to be reminded of, okay? And so a lot of times, um, uh, you know, we're, we're looking for practical application. And I'm looking for things that you can take home and do something. And I'm realizing that sometimes the stories in the scripture have less to do with what man needs to do and more about what God's already done and just reminded of what God's already done or wants to do in and through our lives. So we're going to look at Matthew 8 chapter and we're going to be right here in verse 18 and go through that. Is that all right? Make some comments and then we'll go home. At the sight of a large crowd gather around him. Jesus gave orders to the disciples to get ready to sail back to the other side of the lake. Now, this is a different story than last week. We know that the disciples were asked to go to the other side of the lake as well. In this case, um, this is the, the story when Jesus goes to sleep, okay? And so he told the disciples, this is after they fed another 5,000, just then a religious scholar approaches him and says, teacher, I'll follow you wherever you go. I mean, how many have said that before? God, if you just get me out of here, I'll follow you wherever you go, right? And Jesus, and, um, he, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the son of man has no true home in this world. In other words, he's telling him, he goes, listen, you have no idea that type of a commitment to follow me. You won't get any rest. And this is not the path that you think that it is. And so he goes on to say, another man comes up and speaks to him. He says, Lord, I'll follow you. But first, let me take care of my aged dad and bury him when he dies. But Jesus said to him, now is the time to follow me. And those who are the dead, let them bury their own dead. And if you take a look at that and just study that a little bit, it's basically uh, the oldest son was in charge of taking care of the dad until he dies. And then sometimes he had to stay there a whole year. Uh, and, and kind of rebury his bones again. That was kind of just a culture uh, back then. So he's basically saying, he goes, hey, let me take care of my dad f first. It's going to be about a year out. And that's why Jesus said, hey, you follow me right now. Now is the time to follow me. Isn't that good news right there? And then we get to this story. I just wanted to give you the context. And so um, suddenly, I mean, now, when he got into the boat, so Jesus gets into the boat, the disciples follow him. Suddenly, a great tempest comes and arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. Then the disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're perishing. Then he said to them, wake up, sleeper. He didn't really say, I'm saying that. Why are you afraid? Have faith in God. Where's your faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm so that the men marveled, saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? And so I want to take a look at that passage real quick, because as I was thinking about this, I was like, okay, guys, this, this is just not a good passage for believers, because if a storm like that comes, we're not asleep during storms like that, okay? I don't know about you, but I don't sleep during a crazy storm like that. Maybe some of y'all guys do. You're snoring away. But I'm talking about when tragedy strikes, stuff happens. I'm not the one that just rests and falls asleep. I got to figure something out. You know, humans don't sleep in storms. Humans don't speak to storms. And storms don't obey humans usually, right? So what's the idea here? And I realized that, hey, you know what? This passage has more to do with being reminded of some things. So let's take a look at that real quick, just verse by verse, and then we'll, um, again, just make some comments. Now, when he got into the boat, the disciples did what? Followed him. Reminder number one, Jesus leads, disciples follow. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sometimes we have, we have to be reminded of that, that he's the leader and you and I are the follower. We have a tendency for us to lead and then ask him to follow our plans. Ask him to follow us. Lord, bless our idea. Bless the creation that we're creating right now. Right? And we have to be, it's called inverted Christianity. And many of us think that we're doing him a favor by serving in a local church or serving or following him or what happens. But the reminder is this. Listen, he created us in his image. 
But ever since then, we've been trying to create God in our image. And we just can't do that. He leads, we follow. Don't get ahead of God, because if you get ahead of God, then you don't know where you're, you're going. Just wait, just pause, and wait till you have peace, because he's going to lead, and you're going to follow. The enemy comes and he tries to put pressure, and he's trying to drive you into that next season of your life, or that business plan that you have, or that, you know, whatever that is, that investment that you want to do. But let God lead, and just pause and wait, because he will tell you, hey, now's the time to do this. So a reminder number one, and he goes on to say, and then suddenly, so Jesus is in the boat, disciples are in the boat, I should have got the, I was, I was trying to get a boat, over, like a big boat, but I couldn't carry it, it had a, a big old motor on it, and I just couldn't do it by myself, so <laughs> you get the idea, but they're all in the boat, and all of a sudden it says, a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves. I looked up that word tempest, do you know what that means? It means, it seems like, you know, other passages talk about a great windstorm comes. And um, this one, tempest, the word means a shaking, like an earthquake. So it, all of a sudden it says, suddenly a great earthquake arose on the sea. But it wasn't necessarily an earthquake. When you look at all the gospels, uh, a great windstorm came and, it, and the waves started beating on that boat, like an explosion, like a sh it shook the boat, like an earthquake. So reminder number two, following Jesus doesn't exempt us from any opposition. Isn't that the truth? We've all heard that before. Following Jesus breeds opportunities for opposition. <laughs> following Jesus is, is, is the best way to um, practice your faith. It's all faith practice, isn't it? Following Jesus is the reason you are a target. So you got to embrace that moment. You remember Jesus? He was led by the Spirit where? Into the wilderness. To be tempted. Now we're talking about Jesus leading us, or him being led by the Spirit of God into the, into the, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So following him doesn't uh, keep you or prevent you from having heartache or stuff that goes on in life. Following Jesus is the reason why you're the target here. And he's going to come in. So you might be in a situation right now where you're, you're, you're asking yourself like, man, Lord, I've been, I've been following you with all my heart. What's going on here? Why do I have four flat towers? Why did they steal my lawnmower? Right, coach? Amen. <laughs> Somebody just stole his lawnmower. If any of you guys have stolen a lawnmower, that's his. <laughs> um, so it reframe, the thing that we have to do constantly is re help people reframe in ourselves. We reframe every opposition as an opportunity. When people walk out of this door, they see an exit sign. When I walk out of this door, I see an entrance sign into something else. Amen. Okay, so you have to train yourself to renew your mind, to learn how to reframe the situation. I don't have a problem. I have an opportunity here. And so when you look at it that way, he gives you strength on the inside. It matters not how hard the waves hit the boat. What matters is who's in the boat with you when it gets hit. Amen? Yeah, amen. So number two, following Jesus will not exempt you from an opposition. So he goes to sleep. Where was Jesus? He was asleep. <laughs> then his disciples. Now these guys, were, they were, it's not like a little wind. I mean, these guys were scared for their life. They were about to be, they were about to die. <laughs> Have you ever, anybody ever been in a situation where you're almost going to, I mean, you feel like this is the last day of my life. I've been there, climbing Yosemite, climbing with Joel. I've been there. <clears throat> crows, the crows know also. It's like, man, we're just a foot or two away from just like, see y'all, see y'all in heaven. But he was asleep during that moment, and his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. Reminder number three, every storm has its own challenges. Watch this. Every storm has its own challenges. You might be facing the very same storm that your brother's facing on the other side of this room, but how he's leading you to face that is going to be different than how he's leading you to face that. The truth, right? Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Uh, sometimes you speak to the mountain. There are other times he gives you grace to walk through that mountain. 
It just depends. So the, the answer to a thousand questions when it comes to whatever you're facing is be led by God's spirit. If you remember last week's story, there was a time in that storm that Jesus came to the disciples. But in this story, in this storm, the disciples come to Jesus. Right? In both storms, though, here's what you'll find. Jesus is resting. He was resting on the mountain praying. And right here, he's resting here on the boat asleep. He was resting because he's exhausted. He had just ministered to thousands of people that day. But he's also resting because he's just replenishing. The Father's replenishing him, right? Here's a life lesson. You know why Jesus can sleep? Because he knows that he's in the hands and he's put his trust in the one who never sleeps or never slumbers. Amen? Amen. When you look at that example, you'll know that he's resting with the Father. One, he knows who he is. He knows who his Father is. He knows that it's not his time. He's not going to die while he's asleep in that boat. He knows that. He's going to die when there's a different kind of tree there around him. Isn't that the truth? Psalms 121 says, I'll lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will never slumber nor sleep. Put your trust, regardless of the storm that you're facing, in the God of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. Rest in him. Learn how to rest in him. And it goes on to say, but he said to them, wake up, sleeper. I mean, he said to them, wake up. Why are you afraid? Have faith in God. Or where's your faith? That's what Jesus wakes up and he says, hey, it's like, man, I was sleeping. I was in REM mode. And he said, why are you afraid? Have faith in God. He rose, rebukes the wind and the sea, and there's a great calm. Reminder number four is another thing we need to be reminded of. Number four, Jesus is more concerned with building your faith than demonstrating his power. I mean, you'll see this over and over in scripture. He's more focused on building your faith in that moment than demonstrating his power. He'll demonstrate his power, but that's not the lesson. We all know he's more powerful than anything else on this earth. But he wants to learn and teach you a lesson concerning your faith in him. He wants to build your faith more than demonstrate his power. Remember in Luke's gospel earlier, the scripture says that he sent them out uh, two by two. And they were, man, they were seeing miracles through their hands. They were casting out devils. They were laying hands on the sick and people were recovering. And Jesus makes a statement because they were rejoicing on their way back. And he goes, hey, behold, I give you authority upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. But don't rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to your name. Rejoice that your, your, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Rejoice that you have a relationship with me. Not about the power. Didn't he, didn't he, say, didn't, didn't he say one day that uh, many will come in my name and say, Hey, Lord, I, I cast out devils in your name. I did all these works in your name. Power was demonstrated through these hands. But he'll say, I never knew you. Right? The scripture goes on to say in 1 Peter, he goes, look right here in 1 Peter 1, 7, it says, when Jesus wraps all this up, it's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. Amen. Jeremiah says it this way, let not a wise man glory in his wisdom, let not a mighty man glory in his might, let not a rich man glory in his riches, but if you want to glory, glory in this, that you understand and know me, is what the Lord says, amen? amen. I love that passage. Why are you afraid, he said, have faith in God. Listen, your storm and our storm may have high winds, but do you know him? The one who can calm the storm that's raging inside of your own soul. Do you know him? Amen. So he goes on to say right here in that passage, so the men marveled, say marveled, saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Reminder number five. Now you guys know this. You, we hear, you hear us say this a lot. Life is, is lived forward, but understood looking backward, right? The relationship that you have with Jesus, it's personal. It's just between you and him. Isn't that correct? And so, so if, you, if you, you, you ever meet someone in, in a room or in a place and you're talking to them or they say hello or you interact with them, and then, but you don't know who that person is. And then after he leaves, you realize, oh man, that was the CFO of whatever. Anybody ever do that? Isn't that the guy that I see on TV? Yeah. 
Well, the same is true here. Looking back, if it were a normal day, in that moment right there, they asked this question. He goes, um, who can this be that even the winds and the, and the waves obey him? Man, if I was there and I was one of those disciples, I could have, and I know what I know today because I'm, 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 I'm able to look back and I'm able to understand some things of who our father is. They were in that moment and they didn't realize who he really was in that moment, right? But I could go back and say, hey, I know who he is. Let me tell you who he is. You, you look to him as the son of a carpenter, but I know him as almighty God. I know him as the creator of heaven and earth and all that is seen and unseen, right? You know him as one who calms the storm. I know him as the one who calms my heart. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the shepherd of my soul. He's the author and perfecter of my faith. He's the great deliverer. The only one who's faithful and true. Who can this be? Wake up, sleeper. Let me remind you who he is. He's the great I am. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's Lord over all. He's your peace. He's my hope. He's your redeemer. He's my rock. He's our strong tower. He's the door we have to walk through. He's the way when I'm lost in the wilderness. He's the truth when I'm stuck in deception. Who can this be? man be that even the winds and the waves obey him. Let me tell you who he is. Wake up, sleeper. Let me remind you, he's the author of your life. He's the chief cornerstone. He's my daily bread from heaven. He's the chief shepherd of my soul. He's my mediator. He's my advocate. He's everything I've ever needed or wanted. He delivered me from addiction. He delivered me from the chains of destruction, the chains in my soul. He made me a better husband. He made me a better father. He made me, he gave me back my family. He gave me back my sanity. He calls me his friend. He calls me his beloved. I'm accepted in him. I'm the righteousness of God in him. Who can this be? You don't have to be afraid. You can't quit right now, my friend. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Amen. He's a good God. And that's who he is. I could go back and the disciples would probably be like, who is this guy? Who are you, right? Psalms 34 says it this way. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Come, let us talk about God's goodness. Sometimes we just need to be reminded. We just need the power of a reminder. It's so amazing. Hebrews, the 10th chapter says, let us uh, hold fast to the confession of our hope. The confession of our expectation without wavering. Why? Because he who promised, he's faithful. You know, every now and then, if you want to take something home, this is what you need to take home that we need to just stop and go back over some of the major victories that we had in our lives. Isn't that the truth? Sometimes it's good to remember the day your child was born. It was a miracle. Sometimes it's bad to remember the, the day your child was born. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to remember how God gave you that job, how you met the right person. You know, I remember walking down the park one day and I'm minding my own business. And I'm sitting there by a fence and all of a sudden this gal in front of me, I think she, she saw me walking by and she comes up and comes right out of the water and she's right there before me. And we lay eyes one to another and I married her and I began to date her and began to love on her and it was just a beautiful thing. And we've been together 41 years now. <clears throat> but here's what I'm saying. That wasn't, a, looking back, that wasn't a coincidence. That wasn't a coincidence. That wasn't a lucky break. God directed my steps. He led me. And if he lead me back then, he's going to lead me today in whatever situation I face. Amen. You're not just lucky. You don't just keep beating the odds. It's the mercies of God upon your life. His hand is upon your life. The reason that truck didn't run over you, friend, the reason that sickness didn't take you out, the reason is because God has a destiny for you to fulfill. There's more to come in your life. He has an assignment for you to accomplish. His mercies are never going to give up on you. His calling is revocable. He chose you before you could ever choose him. You're a marked man. You're a marked woman in him. The creator of the universe, his hand is upon your life. Don't ever forget that, amen? The sooner you surrender your will to him, the better off you're going to be in whatever aspect of your life that you're in. You're not giving up on anything. We're going to let you give up on anything. You're going to gain a destiny, his purpose, his plan for your life. David said it this way, if it had not been for the goodness of God, where would I be? Amen. Where would I be? Cancer couldn't finish you off. That bad tooth couldn't finish you off. Depression couldn't finish you off. 
The divorce and that legal problem couldn't finish you off. The bankruptcy didn't finish you off. The person talking about you didn't finish you off. The haters and the critics and the naysayers, they tried to push you down, make you look bad. They did their best, but their best wasn't enough because you're still standing. You're still strong. You still got a smile. You got knocked down, but you got back up again. Why? Because he was the lifter up of your soul. You had a setback and a breakup, but you're still in the game. You went through a loss, but you didn't get bitter. You're moving forward. You're better right now. Wake up, sleeper. Let me remind you of what the scripture says. Psalms 129 says, listen to this. From my earliest youth, my enemies have persecuted me, but they have never been able to finish me off. Why? Because Jesus is in your boat. That's why. He's in your boat. He's resting. He's at the right hand of God praying for you. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the scripture says that God will raise up a barrier for you. He'll take care of you. He'll protect you. He'll watch over you. You know, I have a friend, and I'll just close with this story real quick. I have a friend who is uh, an outdoorsman. He's a professional fisherman. And um, I loved to go into his house because in his house, there's all kinds of impressive animals all over his wall. I mean, he's got alligators, massive alligators that he killed himself or shot himself. He didn't shoot himself. He shot the alligator. (laughs) He's got bears. He's got buffaloes. He's got, man, just all kinds of exotic things. And they're all mounted on his wall. And, uh, you know, I I have, he also has pictures and things like that. You know, he, he also has done just regular trout and, you know, caught little things here and there. And none of them are, are, are without significance. But the special ones are the ones that are mounted on the wall. But the everyday stuff, you know, he has them in pictures and they're all around. I mean, it's got so much stuff. It's absolutely amazing. He can sit there and tell you stories about every single piece in his room. And in some ways, God is the same way. He's done many great things for your life. He's given you your daily bread. He's given you a satisfaction in your soul. He gives you strength and wisdom for every day, right? He protects you. We're all thankful for that. But you know what God wants to do? He wants to do some things in your life that are mountable. That are mountable. Some significant things, some miracles, some, some things that you'll never forget. They'll be branded in your soul forever. Things, great victories that you can mount on the wall. I have a plaque that I made my wife. Um, it's, a, it's just a board that I made and I put some edging on it and I painted it. And then I put the, I, I, I ripped off pages of scripture that Natalie and I have used to stand on. Parts of my Bible that uh, we were in Bible school with and, and even before that. And different sayings, different memories, different things that have been branded. They're major victories that are, that are mountable in our hearts. And I put these things and every time I walk by there, I can just stop and just, if I feel depressed or I feel discouraged, I'll stop there and I'll just start reading some of those things. It's like, man, God, you've been so faithful. What am I thinking about right now? What am I thinking about? It says, man, you've been faithful then. You've been faithful that. Man, I thought I was going to die here. Look, you brought me through. What am I crying about? The same God who was faithful then, he is faithful today. Amen. Sometimes we don't need to, when you look at those things, sometimes you don't need a miracle. You are the miracle. You are the miracle. He's put his hand upon you. So everybody say, wake up, sleeper. Arise from the dead. And Christ will give me light. My prayer is that this whole series blessed you. That because we know that he still raises the dead things to life. He still resuscitates, you know, those dead things, those dormant dreams. He's still our true rest. And he's still reminding us by his spirit of his goodness that he has for all of our lives. Amen. Amen. Uh, share that, share that passage or share the, the series with other folks who are in that place just to ignite their faith and encourage them and build them up. Amen. Let me pray with you guys. Father, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to just share the word of God and to recognize and remind ourselves of your goodness, of your love and kindness, of how great you are in our lives. And I know that there are people in this room that haven't experienced that. Or maybe they're in a storm in their life that they just, they're drowning and they can't see a way out. If you're here this morning and you're in that place, you're in that place where you're just, man, overwhelmed with the circumstances of life. You need rest in your soul. You realize that you haven't made him your rest. You need to realize that you need to remind yourself of who God is. If that's you this morning, I want to pray with you. Can you just lift up your hand real quick? Thank you. Yeah, there's several of you guys. Awesome. Let me pray with you. If you are ever in the Seguin area, 
come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.